Well, it's after Christmas now, and I was looking at some of the uh, garden stores, and they sell a lot of the dwarf Alberta spruce as little Christmas trees, and they're quite cheap to buy. But we grow the Alberta spruce for bonsai, and the ones which are usually sold in the supermarkets and garden stores have very thin trunks, but these have been grown in the nursery for many years. So the spruce like that with a trunk which is thicker than my thumb, that would be at least 15 years old. So we grow them slow in these pots, so we have quite a few of these. We sell a lot of these because although people don't think of using the spruce for bonsai, I can assure you that they make beautiful bonsai. Sometimes this pot tree was on the side like that and our staff forgot to water it is half dead but it doesn't die it refuses to die so i'm going to make some bonsai out of this as well so if i bring my wheelbarrow around i will just load a few of these trees in the wheelbarrow and we will take it into the uh, nursery to make bonsai i'm just going to pick them at random i'm not going to be choosy and pick the best we will just pick them at random This one doesn't look so good, I'll do that. And that strikingly one I will pick. So I will go to another area because I want to show you how they grow as big trees. I have one that I've been growing for the last, I would say, 35 years. And it was already a big tree. It was given to me by a conifer collector. So let's go and have a look at it. While I was passing, this is another subject that is used a lot as Christmas trees. This is the Nordman spruce or uh, Nordmandii they call it, it's uh, I think it's a Picea, so this is Nordman spruce and this also makes quite nice bonsai, so why don't I pick one of these as well, so let's see what we can do with these trees, so these are all subjects which are used as Christmas trees but we're going to make one now but I'm going to show you that big one first. These are two huge Pisces that were given to me more than 30 years ago and they've always been in pots. I had about 20 or 30 of them and I use them in a landscape. I will show you the garden that I use these in. They make beautiful garden trees but these were left over from that project so for the last 30 years they've just been languishing on the garden here in the nursery but I will one day make a large specimen from it uh, they need to be potted on but it's not dead so as long as it's not dead I can resuscitate them so they're massive trees with beautiful thick trunks but this is not the same one this is an ordinary Christmas tree the Norway spruce and Norway spruce is difficult to use for bonsai but again you can do something with it but I won't do that today so we'll go back to the nursery and just start showing you what we will do with those small pies here. Uh, these are the ones we buy from wholesalers and this is what you can buy from garden stores as little Christmas trees. They put a little bit of snow on it uh, and a little bit of tinsel and they're sold as Christmas trees. But we don't sell these straight away because we use them for making bonsai and as they get older they get bigger and the trunks get more interesting. These are propagated from cuttings. Apparently the Pisces are very easy to grow from cuttings. So I will pick one which has got an interesting trunk and see what I can make out of it. So let's take these two and show you what I can make with these. Okay, so we're going to have a session with Christmas trees to make into bonsai. So let's begin by doing these two. Now every tree, as I say, is different. This is almost like a multi-trunk tree because it's got two quite low branches there. And if I were growing this on, I would keep these low branches as sacrificial branches to thicken the trunk. But once the trunk is thick, then we will probably sacrifice that and just keep the top. So that's what sacrificial branches are. So all these little cuttings, this are grown so well and they're so strong. I always prod around the base because there is a lot of trunk below the planting level. So the planting level is there. In fact, I could have even used this as a branch. So there you are. 
it's not a multi trunk tree it's just got branches a lovely tree look at that beautiful so this is ideal so let's give the traditional s shape the s shape as you will have gathered by now is the most common shape for making bonsai so this is i think two and a half mil wire And let's do a bit of wiring. So again, the wiring is keep the wire tight. Always wire the trunk first because I'm going to make this into an S shape. So keep the wire really tight. Avoid trapping the branches. There's no magic. I'm not doing sleight of hand. And with a bit of luck, I should have just the right amount of wire to use. And that's it, it's gone right to the top. And I've used the right amount of wire, so let's give it a bend so the twisting is like stirring a pot. That action, I'm literally stirring the pot like that. That is the action I'm doing. So that is the S that I've created by doing that. And I will just prop it up into a little pot so that I can imagine what angle of planting this tree is going to be at so it's going to be at this angle so we can use most of the branches again let's use a two branch principle these branches don't need to be that long by trimming the ends you can encourage more growth to happen so don't be afraid to prune so then the two branches here, these two branches. So one piece of wire to do the two branches. Don't worry if the wire doesn't go right to the end, it's just to guide the wire to go in the correct direction. Looking for the thickest central stem to wire and now take this outwards. So those two branches are wired together. And we wire the next two. With a bit of luck I may not need to remove much wire at all. This is the sort of tree that you could probably complete in three minutes, but I'm not racing against time. I'm taking the time to show you how it can be done. I'm looking for similar thickness branches. If there is a difference in thickness between the, the pairs that I've chosen, then it won't work. You may have to use probably a double wire on one and a single wire on the other one. These are now thinner ones, so I'm now going to change the size of wire. So just pop over the bench still there and I'll get some clean wire. So this is one millimeter wire. Let's put it in a temporary pot, just stay there, I'll just bring a little break. It's 
got a lovely fragrance. The Pisces smells so nice. And the pot we would use would probably be one of these simple Chinese glaze pots. I'm not fussy about pot, you can use a glaze pot if you wish, although being a evergreen you should really use an unglazed pot in case any wise people tell me that I'm doing wrong. It's surprising how many people tell me how I should be doing this and doing that. I welcome constructive comments, but don't forget I'm trying to show you or ordinary bonsai enthusiasts how easy it is to do bonsai. I'm not trying to show you difficult things and magical things because this is not the object of this YouTube channel. I'm trying to make bonsai simple and accessible to everyone. So this is how I've done this little Christmas tree and uh, as I say it could have just taken three minutes to produce that one. So that one is done. Now let's see what we could do with this one. This one I think has a long branch so you could do the same with this. Again most of these are fairly similar so I won't waste too much time. Again it's got beautiful trunk there. Uh, I will, I will do something different. Let me just show you what I will do with this one. Because not all trees need to be wired with a curly trunk. I'm just going to do one with a straight trunk and uh, see how it looks. So I will begin by, so I'm not going to touch the trunk. I'm just going to wire the branches. So this will turn out different, hopefully. We're going to train this in a typical classic Christmas tree style. That means a straight tree. Let's see how nice that would turn out. Lots of wiring to do. Perhaps I shouldn't burden you with watching me do all this mundane wiring. I may break off at some point and just show you what I've done at the end of the day. This is a very long branch, so I don't need that. It's much too long, so I shorten that. say don't be afraid to cut. So, as I said I'm trying to create a Christmas tree image. I could have easily made that into an S shape because I don't want everything to look like an S shape so let's do something different which I'm doing. Oh, that was a bit too thick. So choosing the right grade of a wire, remember, is quite important. If you use the wrong grade of wire, not only are you wasting wire, but uh, it won't be necessary to do it. And you could damage the branch if you use something which is too thick. So this is still the front. Removing some branches just to show the, 
the different layers. So as I said, don't be afraid to cut. Remember that branches always tend to grow upwards if left to their own devices. They reach the light and the tree grows taller. But with bonsai, we try to make these small trees look old. And as trees get older, the weight of the branches make the branches hang downwards. And that's why we keep the branches down. So many people ask, why do you keep do that? So this is the reason why we create branches which are sloping downwards. So we take intermediate branches out. And keep wiring. We have some branches at the back as well. Right, so I keep looking for pairs, remember. there so that's the tree done you can say I was trying to create a Christmas tree and if you don't want the tree to be too tall you can just cut it off there and keep it that size so again let's do a similar pot or another pot like that so just to show you that with the same tree I've created two different images two completely different images so that's my Christmas tree tile as a classic S-shaped style so with these little Pisces I've created these two okay so that's for the smallest size and then we'll move on to the bigger one now this is the one I picked up in the field I think this was thrown over onto the side and our guys forgot to water it so they suffered a bit I think for the last day it didn't have any water so it was just lying sideways on the grass so it's almost half dead but it's not entirely dead I don't like to throw anything away I never like to waste plants so let's see if I can rescue this tree this is the same as those ones that I purchased but they didn't get a chance to grow big because they didn't get watered so let's see what I can do with this so I'm not cheating I haven't studied the tree at all so the first thing I do is to remove all the obviously dead twigs anything which is dead looking I will remove so that I can see what I have left to work with like a twin trunk so let's just see by removing the dead twigs if I have anything left careful that I don't remove everything otherwise I end up with nothing 
Okay. Let me give it a twist because the tree hasn't got much at the top, so if I give it some character at the base, I might end up with an interesting looking tree. So I've used quite thick wire. This is, I think, maybe two and a half millimeter wire. And I'm going to give it a fairly severe bend, if it will bend, because this is quite an old tree. Well, that wire didn't do the job. So I can put a double piece of wire, but because this is a fairly small tree, I don't want to put a double piece of wire, otherwise you'll see more wire than there is the trunk. So let's remove that wire and try something thicker. So let's try the next grid up. And hopefully that should do it. This is three and a half millimeter wire. Really tight. This is where you would need a variety of sizes of wire. I find it very frustrating. Sometimes I go to other people's demonstrations, especially in different countries, they don't have the right wires and you're struggling to try and achieve things without having the proper tools or equipment. So now this is the right grade of wire to use. So I've managed to create quite an interesting shape out of that. I know that this branch won't break because these trees are quite flexible. So I've managed to create that shape. Now let's see what I can do about the branches. So the branches I will... Now there are two thick branches there. So the two branch principle again. Forgive me if I sound like a gramophone record talking about the two branch principle. If anything useful you may have learned from me is applying the two branch principle. So these two branches will be wired. One piece of wire. I can assure you that by the correct watering and feeding this tree will come back a treat. I have this belief that there is very seldom anything that is called impossible material. Every piece of material is possible. You can make something out of nothing. So let's wire a few more wires. In fact, this tree is turning out so interesting that I'm getting quite excited. So let's see what happens now if I do these two bits of watches. Some of these branches have very small dormant buds. I'm not cutting it because I know they will produce buds. So 
So I'm now going to take this wire out to this branch. Because there are so few branches, I'm going to use every single branch that is available. And then use some really thin wire to wire one more. I'm just going to remove the tips because by removing the tips I'm going to force the buds to break back further into the tree. So I've got that trunk. So what am I going to do with this one? Uh, that's quite nice as it is. In fact that's quite nice like that even. I could do something like that and take it to the back. Although I don't really need that. But let's see. Conventional wisdom is that I should remove that one. But let's experiment and see what will happen if I do keep it. So let's put a piece of wire on that and see what turns out. So let's use the right grain of wire. And I'm going to experiment and see what comes of this one. So I put a piece of wire on that. So let's just give it an interesting twist and see what I get. that sort of effect. And one more piece of wire. All these buds will have put back. And, uh, This is just an exercise in rescuing something which would be thrown away. And again, if I just put it in some sort of pot. See what happens. So this is what turned out, if I can get uh, our editor to show the before and after, so you get some idea, I'm going to keep some of those. I don't want to cut too much because they will sprout. So that was the almost impossible dead tree made into this. and. During the summer, we were going to get a lot of growth, so I rescued a half-dead tree and made it into something, hopefully, which will turn out nice. So those were the simple ones. We will now go to the bigger ones. So this is the start of another week, and this is the first proper week of the new year, 2020. And I'm trying a new experiment of filming myself. I always find it a bit uh, difficult to get my staff to keep following me around doing the videos because whenever I feel like doing something I get on and do it. So let's see if this little exercise of filming myself works. So I've got my iPhone on a tripod and I'm speaking to the iPhone and showing what I'm doing. So carrying on from what I did last week 
This is what I did last week. We made these two little cute uh, Pisces, Dwarf Alberta Spruce, from this sort of material. So this was the material we used for making these two trees. These trees are maybe two years old and they're quite strong, grown from cuttings. And this is what we can produce in just, I would say, three to five minutes each. But we can progress and make the Pisces using larger trees. We grow these on, as I was showing you in the field, we grow them and they are quite thick. The trunk is at least an inch in diameter at the base and they are very straight trees. We don't attempt to bend them at this stage because they are nice, just uh, straight and tall. After all, not all bonsai have to be that shape. Some of them are very nice and they just kept straight. So I, I have a couple of them, I will show you. Nice strong trees like this. And we will see what we can create out of this. So as the tree gets bigger, these little lower shoots and branches tend to die. And if they die, there's no point trying to pursue it. This is too thick to keep. Let's get rid of that. Working from the side is a bit difficult, but I'll get away with it. Just be patient with me and let's see how far we get. We can clean the trunk. I'm not bothered to do much cleaning because I'm here really to show you the actual process rather than the fine detail. By the way, many people miss the point. They say, why don't you do all these exotic, high-powered bonsai? but they miss the point of these channels. These channels are to show you how easy and friendly it is to create bonsai. It is very off-putting if you do things which are too complicated because ordinary mortals like us are not able to do those sort of things. So let us see what we can get out of this tree. So we are going to make this into like a tall conifer or Christmas tree. So these branches are a bit too dense here. We need to create layers between successive branches. So let's begin by doing that. So we always start from the bottom and then work our way upwards. So is there one particular side that's better than the other? Well, I'll just wire it and see how we get on. We don't want branches that are too thick and by the same token we don't want branches that are too thin. So these are a nice thickness. This seems to be a bit too big when I wire it down. See how far it goes out? I'm not sure if I can use that. Although I won't remove it at this stage. Let's wire these two first. So to wire it, then we need to choose the right grid of wire. I think this is one and a half mil. One and a half mil will do the job. This, by the way, is a very nice little wire cutter, parrot beak wire cutter. This is also a wire cutter. And I can also use my Falco secateurs to cut wire from the notch. So that also does the job. So measure the wire. If this is going to be the front, I'm going to wire those two branches. I'll take the wire from the back and then link the two. The reason why I take it from the back is because I don't want the wire to be in the front because it's going to make it look untidy. So when you do wiring, it's very important to keep it tidy. Tidiness is absolutely the key. They say cleanliness is next to godliness. I'm not sure how far that is true, but with bonsai, keeping a thing tidy is half the battle. And then the little gin pliers, very useful for curling the ends. And then we're going to take the branch down. 
So this is a classic conifer. When you ask a child to draw a conifer tree, and they will invariably draw a tree like this, a tall A shape. These bud back very, very readily, by the way. So don't be afraid to prune. They will bud back. Now, do I need this one? Probably not. Let's fly those at the back and see how we get on. I won't cut that yet in case I need it. The Pisces have a lovely fragrance. I don't know how to describe it, but it's really like a herb smell. Okay, two more branches. I always take the wire around the trunk because if you take it around the trunk, it makes it more stable. the wire on the front because I have to do it but there's no other way but at least I'm not having too many wires crossing from the front it's always difficult to perform with the back to the camera I'm trying to have my side to the camera so bear with me if I have to perform in this awkward fashion so I've got that right there as we go along we see what the effect is after wiring so those two are done do I need this it becomes too much if I keep that I will keep that and keep this keep this I still won't remove it yet and I won't remove this either so let's go up the trunk. The very, very small ones I may remove. Let me just bring the camera closer and you can see. You can see how congested it is. So some of these very, very thin ones, like here, I won't need those. So these I will remove. So I'm removing the very, very thin branches, which obviously can't be used. And by doing that, I'm helping to create the space that I'm looking for. Okay, we will use those ones. Maybe that one. Okay, this seems to be too thin, so I'll get rid of that. So I've got these two which I can use and these two. So I will use quite thin wire. The Pisces by the way are grown from cuttings so if you want to save the cuttings and root them they will certainly propagate very easily. Many people have asked me Oh, let's make Mugo pine cuttings. But I have tried and tried for the last 50 years and I find that no pines air layer or propagate from cuttings. The only pine that propagates from air layering is the Zuisho pine. In Japan, the Zuisho five needle pine is propagated by air layering, but no other pine, as far as I know, can be propagated by air layering. If any of you viewers have tried air layering a pine and have been successful, please let me know. I would dearly love to discover something new. After all, no one has all the knowledge. A lot of people have more experience, so 
it's always nice to have a receptive mind to see what works for other people, what may not work for you may work for others. So I always have that attitude. Now I haven't removed that, but I've shortened it because I think I may need it, but I won't use it just yet. Let me just wire these thin ones and see how far I go. So you can see that the tree is already taking the classic mature conifer shape. keep asking myself, do I need this or not? Well, I think if I use it, it might become too dense. I'll try it, rather than cut it off. Let me see if it works. If it works, well and good. If it doesn't work, I can still remove it. So two branch principle, I'll link it to the next one. Take the wire to the back and provide a bit of an anchor. See if that works. A lot of branches on that side. So you see I'm trying to create spaces between su successive layers of branches. And as I go up, I keep testing to see if I put this down, is it clouding the gap too much? If it clouds it, then I won't use that branch. Like this one, if I put this one down, I might use this and get rid of this one. That might be an idea. So sometimes, this is what we call keeping your options open. So. Let's see what happens if I do this. I'm just going to thin this a little bit. And why these two down?
Is it too much? If it's too much, let's get rid of that. see what is going on at the back there are some very small thin branches I will keep these because if I remove them all I will have nothing left so let's do those This is one of those species that improve with time. Like they say, a wine improves with the passage of time. So these Pisces, the longer you keep them, they become much better as they get older. When they're newly made, they don't look so impressive, but you give them time and they will turn out to be really nice. Do I need this? No, I think it's a bit too much. I'll get rid of this because when I put this down, this will be in the way. So let's get this. I don't think I need that either. There seems to be a big gap there, but when you pull the branch down, that gap gets filled up. So you don't have to worry about that. This is quite a thick branch, but I still need it. If I get rid of it, I don't have anything left. So I will use it. I get to the top. I've got to watch what I do in case I cut too much off. Sometimes if the branch is hard to bend, you can make a little incision underneath. Take a little lump out and it makes it easier to bend. I don't know whether you can see what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. So we need to draw these two. Too much here so let's get rid of this this have I pulled out I'm gonna hide the trunk so I'm gonna get rid of this so by method of elimination as you work up the tree you will find which are the branches you need and which are the branches you don't need and I'm now almost at the apex now because this branch here was a very thick one I may put a double piece of wire around it and uh, wire the next one using this as the anchor. So I'm using this 
as the anchor so wired twice because it's a very hefty branch compared with all the others and I'll wire to the one at the back Classic conifer, you know, like the Christmas tree. Now that I don't think I need because there's one there already. So let's get rid of this one. So we keep working up. See that one can be bent down there. Getting a bit congested. Not to worry. We will get there eventually. So just by placing it in position you will soon realize which branch can be removed and which branch can be kept. So by placing these down they fill that space so I will wire these two but I've got rid of all the thin ones there. done this multitasking before I'm trying to video myself and make the tree at the same time I hope it works because if it works then I can produce many more videos so I need this getting a bit dense but I don't want a thin crown I want a fairly full crown so I've got to be careful how much I remove now if it is made too thin then it'll look odd you don't want a single shoot pointing up to the sky I think just a bit of thinning there should work I always feel very self-conscious having to talk to the camera with no one around. I have to pretend that you're there. We're getting near the apex, so I've just got to wire a little more, open out a little bit, and we'll see what the result looks like. I've got to always remember which is the front. going to bother wiring too much up here because this is the front of the tree I may take that down a little bit and see what happens
keep reminding myself that this is the front. So this is what I've managed to achieve in just a short space of time. And just to show you what an untrained one looks like, you see the difference between the two. So working from this, you can create that. And uh, let's then reinforce the principles. You see the, all this debris here, a lot of debris at the bottom. You can get rid of them. I have made quite a few forests using these pieces and they work extremely well. Although we never bother to wire the branches when we first make it, but as they get more, more mature, if you do wire the branches downwards, they do look quite nice. So this one, again, we can do that, low branches, but you can start the branching from quite high up. So you could easily remove these. So these ones here, I'm going to remove. So I'm almost halfway up the trunk. So this is where we usually start, halfway up the trunk, because when the branches are hanging downwards, or by, by the time you bend them down, they will occupy the space lower down. To show you what I mean, so the branches, although halfway up, when you wire down, they fill the lower portions of the tree. So that is how we do it. I don't want to do another one because you've seen what I've done with that one. So from this, you can get that. So how easy is that? And you can put several together and make a lovely forest from that. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing how we treat the Pisces. And that's another little exercise that is so easy and it's well within your grasp. So I should call the series Bonsai Made Easy. So just enjoy it and keep experimenting. Thank you very much.